Struggles with obesity are nothing new, but groundbreaking medications like Ozempic and Wagovi are reshaping the conversation. Iowa ranks among the top states for GLP-1 medication use, but who is benefiting and who's losing? Iowa's News Now investigative reporter Nick El Hajj finds out in this special report. For millions of Americans dealing with obesity, medications like Ozempic and Wagovi are being hailed as life-changing, promising not just weight loss, but better overall health. But as these drugs become more popular, insurance companies are pulling back, leaving many patients in limbo. GLP-1 medications like Ozempic, Wagovi, and Munjaro were first developed to manage type 2 diabetes, but now the drugs are completely changing how doctors treat obesity. These drugs mimic hormones in your gut, helping you feel full faster, eat less, and lose a lot of weight. It's just blown the rest of them out of the water. We're seeing like 22% weight loss in some of these, which is just insane to think about that you can lose that much weight where the other ones were like excited if it's five. And it's more than just numbers on a scale. Many patients, including a growing number of online influencers, are sharing their success stories, hailing the improvements to their physical and mental health as life changing. We're seeing self-proclaimed GLP-1 influencers and GLP-1 advocates. So more people are becoming engaged, more people are seeing that it is real, right? People are actually losing weight and I can see the visible difference. So if I'm losing weight, I'm moving better, I'm feeling better in all of the aesthetic values that go along with that as well, because we can't discount those. But there is a big problem. Insurance companies are cutting back on covering these medications, saying they're too expensive or that they're being used off-label for weight loss instead of diabetes. Employers are saying, we decided to cover these and now we're seeing, you know, double digit increases in our overall pharmacy spend. And so we're going to pull back that coverage. If you put the 50 percent of obesity, you know, obese patients in America on these drugs, it will bankrupt our insurance because they just can't at that price. They cannot continue to pay for it. In Iowa, the challenges are especially clear. A real chemistry study shows the state has the ninth highest rate of GLP-1 use in the country, but it also ranks among the highest for adult obesity, with almost half of Iowans classified as obese. Equity issues compound the problem, while real chemistry study indicates lower income people are more likely to be obese. It's actually mostly higher income patients using these medications because they can afford the out-of-pocket costs. We're talking almost $650 a month with insurance and over over 1,200 without. For many patients, a denial can be devastating to their health. It's very depressing. I mean, we have patients, BMIs over 60, which is, you know, four or 500 pounds, and we cannot get it approved. But instead, we have to wait for them to get sicker to treat it, which is really unfortunate. The Biden administration has proposed $35 billion in funding over 10 years to expand Medicare and Medicaid coverage for obesity drugs, which could open the door for more people to access these treatments. There is more and more active legislation, and that is really the Treat Obesity Act that is, is currently slated and currently sitting in the congressional halls right now. But not everyone is convinced that funding will be enough. I feel like $35 billion is maybe underestimating how much it would cost. Knowing how many middle class people are on it right now, it makes me very surprised that it would only cost that much. I would hate for us to bankrupt Medicare because of these drugs. Experts say addressing these issues requires more than just funding. And if you look at plans by states that have higher levels of obesity, that like those programs don't exist in a way that could help like, give more options, I guess, in patients that do not have access to healthy foods. Or even if they do, it's so expensive, especially Iowa in the winter, or they're on food stamps. And, you know, you run out of the money to do that by the end of the month. The stigma surrounding obesity and the way it plays into insurance coverage decisions is another hurdle. It's just things out of their control. And, you know, historically, I feel like there's been some thoughts that, like, they do this to themselves or they don't want to work, you know. And it, it's disheartening because I think everyone is working so hard to just day to day to get, you know, through. There are lower cost options for patients, like compounded versions of GLP-1 drugs, but these aren't FDA approved and come with risks. Experts recommend working with obesity clinicians to find other medications or explore non-drug options if if your insurance doesn't come through. It requires everybody, really, all communities, kind of communities to take the lead, schools to take the lead, you know, lots of people to take the lead on this to kind of have us come up together.
Some groups do offer patient assistance for lower income families and some pharmacies also offer coupons. We'll have links to those on iwasnewsnow.com. Now it is important to note these drugs can have serious side effects and as many as one in five people don't respond to the drugs and won't lose weight in the process. So it is important to work with your doctor on any weight loss plan. Reporting in studio, Nikahaj, Iowa's News Now.